sold coast to coast in Canada. Uh, the real big difference between this frame and any other frames that we manufacture is that this frame is a steel frame. So the reason why we make it a steel frame is we, uh, we want the durability of the chair. So weight capacities of the chair will range anywhere from a standard of 250 pounds right up to 600 pound weight capacity. So we tend to use this for higher weight capacities for those bariatric clients. Um, but we do, we also use it for 250 pound weight capacity. So as you can see, the chair is a silver frame. The offerings of colors that we do have with these chairs is either black, silver, or any other color for that matter. Um, it uh, just factor in a one week lead time if you are going to order any other color aside from black and silver, because that is what we have standard. The uh, seat widths and depths on, on this chair uh, range anywhere from 14 to 18 wide. Uh, as a standard and 14 to 18 deep as a standard. We will go up to 30 inches wide on this chair and up to 24 inches deep on the chair. Uh, so we can we, we do, do a, quite a bit of customization. And most commonly this chair, because of its steel structure and durability, we tend to do 22s, 24s and onward uh, for greater weight capacities. So let's take a look at the adjustability of the chair. So the adjustability, we have a horizontal axle plate mounted to the side frame which is height adjustable and it's also depth adjustable. So we can take the center axle and we can pretty much move it anywhere in and around this range here, uh, which allows for a pretty good wheel configuration. Your journals here are also uh, bolted through and they're set right now in a trailing position. And what I mean by trailing is that the journals sit inside the frame and that allows right now for a really tight footprint for us to give it a nice tight turning radius. We can lengthen the base by taking our front journal and mounting it in a forward position, taking our rear axle, mounting it all the way back, and that gives us a longer base to accommodate for those taller people. So there is a lot of adjustability in through the journal and the rear axle. The seat to floor height range on this chair is 12 and a quarter, right up to 18.2575 uh, as a standard. And the important thing to remember about seat to floor height is when you're going down as low as 12 and a quarter, you want to make sure that you're putting a, um, a reasonable wheel on it. And what I mean by that is to put a 20 inch rear wheel and a five inch caster on the front gets you down to 12 and a quarter seat to floor height. So we're still allowing our clients to foot propel the chair, get the chair low, and also reach the rear wheels so they can hand propel the chair. So the, the frame design is, is, is a pretty good design. Rolling over to the back canes, um, our standard height is 14 to 21 height. And if you need to get any taller than that, just specify, just let your let us know what we will customize that for you. The arms are also wraparound arms. So, you know, weight is always an issue of the chair, the total weight of it, uh, seat to floor heights, and then also the overall width of the chair. It could always be challenging those old wartime homes and tight doorways. So what we've done is we've taken the arms and we've wrapped them behind the back cane, which narrows the configuration of the chair. So we have a wrap around arm, which is a two point flip back arm, which stays in that position. So you'll notice that the chair, the arm doesn't flip all the way back. It stays with the chair and it latches into the front here as well. The chair's arms also have two points of attachments here, so the arms are very sturdy and rigid, and there are no tool adjustability in through here. Okay. So those are the arms. As far as the anti-tippers are concerned, the anti-tippers are no tool head adjustments, so I can adjust them with no tools and just lock them in again. This feature is beneficial for those clients that are being pushed, and they need to clear a surface area. We can push the anti-tipper up, they can clear the curve, the area, and then latch them back down to where we need them to be. The Voyager also has angle adjustable back canes. And these bolts in through here allow our back angle of our back cane to go recess back 5, 10, or 15 degrees coming back on the back angle. 
Where would you use that? You'd use that in this type of configuration where you have an upholstery back and you don't have a modular back to adjust the angle, the posterior, anterior adjustability. Um, so we would open up the hip angle by adjusting the, uh, the, um, the back canes in through here. As far as the brakes are concerned, there's two types of brakes that we use on, on the, as a standard. One is a pull to lock, and you see if I'm sitting in the chair, I'll pull upward and engage the brake. And the other one is a push to lock, which is a little different from what this looks like here, but those are our two options. We also have a 3, 6, and 9 inch brake extension, uh, and that's for just for reachability and so forth. When we look at the front rigging, we have a trigger mechanism right here that we push down on, and it allows us to swing the front rigging out, latches in, and then allows us to swing the front rigging in. So if you're in a tight area where you're unable to swing the front end rigging out because of a wall, an obstacle, a toilet, a counter, you're able to swing with the front rigging in on both ends and then forward transfer out of the chair. Thank you very much.